What's going on, everybody? This is Zach Dresch, and you're watching The Dresch Code, home of all things music from a Dresch perspective. We are continuing our discussion. I am joined tonight by Sam Lenz. He is an improvisationalist, uh, part of Backlot 605, a comedian, an artist, and everything in between. Sam, thank you for being on the video. Thanks for having me, man. I'm stoked to be talking about some soundtracks today. Oh, yeah. Tonight, we're going to be talking about our top five movie soundtracks. This was a hard decision to make because there are literally millions of films out there. <laughs> probably. And all of them have soundtracks. Yeah. And the ones that don't uh, can fuck themselves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Wait, this is what I, this, yeah. <laughs> English patient. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but this is one of those videos that we could probably do multiple times over. Like what's my top five this week could be different next month, Absolutely, you know? So yeah. I, I'm thinking this is something we could like continually do like, and have like people on be like, Oh, why was pretty woman your favorite soundtrack? Like, I don't like, <laughs> right. I'm not spoiling anything. That's not on my list, but it's yeah. a great soundtrack though. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Um, do you have honorable mentions that you'd like to bring up, Sam? Sure, I've got some honorable mentions. Right on. Um, my honorable mentions are the Dazed and Confused soundtrack. Oh, Times yeah. At Ridgemont High soundtrack. Both just yeah. like hangout movies that are snapshots of time. I love them. Um, yeah. The Space Jam soundtrack, because I'm a 90s kid. Oh, I forgot about that one. Damn I it. love Space Jam. I love Space Jam yeah. so much. Um, yeah. The new The Great Gatsby soundtrack, which is a controversial pick because a lot of people didn't like that. I thought it was inspired. I loved what Jay-Z did curating that, and I think it fits the movie really well. So that's my plug for The Great Gatsby. I loved it. Um, and then Almost Alice, the companion album to... Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. So many good tracks on that one. Some, some Forgot bands about that, that were one allowed too. to get kind of weird. Robert Smith does a really weird track on it. I love it. And then yeah. uh, one that might surprise a lot of people that's not that it's not on my list is The Lion King. I love The Lion King. I just oh, love sure. five soundtracks just slightly more. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna narrow down my honorable mentions to five because I can probably bring some of these up later on if we choose to do this video again. Um, I've got Last Action Hero. Oh yeah. Um, I'm a '90s kid, so like '90s band soundtracks are my shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got The Rocker with Rain Wilson. This is a random one. Oh shit! Dude, <laughs> yeah, I love that movie. Yes. Yeah. Um, the album is mainly is mainly their fake band ADD and all the tracks that they wrote and their the songs are fantastic. Because yeah, it's like Teddy Geiger that did all of it, right? Yeah, and um, Adam, I think Schlesinger from Fountains of Wayne wrote most of the songs. That's as far right, as I'm yeah. aware. Yeah, and so yeah, and now uh, that was Teddy, and then and then yeah, that's that's one of the most underrated comedies of all time, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, dude, I love that movie. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, early yeah, Emma yeah. Stone and Josh Gad, too. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I've got um, mainly dumb comedies. I got Me, Myself, and Irene soundtrack was great. Yeah. Um, because it was mainly, um, with the exception of like three or four tracks, famous bands covering Steely Dan songs, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah. I like, love when soundtracks do weird stuff like that. Yeah, Smash Mouth cover Do It Again. Um, Hootie and the Blowfish did Can't Find the Time to Tell You. Uh, ben Folds 5 did Berry Town. That was the best track on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of cool stuff on that. And there's some other stuff on there too. But yeah, that was great. Awesome. I like that soundtrack. Dumb and Dumber soundtrack is so good. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's, I'm going to, I'm just going to keep it at that for now. Okay. And he Heavy Metal is also on there too. Oh, I have not seen that, but I, I oh, have heard that I great. need to. I have heard that it's, I need to watch that one. If you're into cheesy 80s heavy metal, that's up your alley for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's up my alley then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, those are my cool. honorable mentions. Okay, okay. So, start with my number five. Sure, or I can start because you started last time. We can just go back and forth. I'll, I'll start. Uh, my number five is The Breakfast Club. 
yeah, it's uh, one of my one of my top five favorite movies of all time. Yeah. I love the soundtrack. It's um, sometimes you can just, th- just throw it on a playlist at a party, and sometimes people are like, "What the fuck?" But then other times they're like, "Oh, I love that scene in that movie." <laughs> like, yep. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's such an iconic yeah. one. It's a good snapshot yeah. of like that that music yeah. that was around at the time. And I mean, the symbol minds. Don't you forget about yeah. me? Is just it's an incredible track. Yeah, you got um, "Fire in the Twilight" by Wang Chung. Yeah, um, absolutely. The, lo- the love theme is so cheesy, but it's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's the <laughs> like it's so good. I love it. Oh god, that's and, awesome! Uh, yeah, it's it's one that um, I used to have on vinyl, but I had to sell it because I needed money. But oh, I had yeah. it on vinyl for a while. It was good. I've been there, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, What's your number, number five? My number five, I think, is probably going to make the internet turn on me again. But um, <laughs> it's um, it's the Tarzan soundtrack by Phil Collins. Nice. I, it's cheesy as hell, man, but I love it. I have <laughs> vivid memories of being, a, you know, like, I was like, what, five or six when that movie came out? And, like, my mom got me the CD and I remember riding around in the back of the car and she liked it. So we just listened to it on the way to school or like wherever we were going. I love that soundtrack, man. Two worlds, one yeah. family just hits me right in the heart. <laughs> you know, That's great. Yeah, yeah. I like that's uh that's one of those soundtracks. I always forget about like when you, it's obvious, but then when you, when you're get when you get told about it, you're like, how did I not think of that? Yeah. Damn it. Well, that that was when you said Breakfast Club. I was like, yeah, how did I not? Come on. <laughs> yeah. That's like one of the soundtracks. <laughs> yeah. I think I made a joke on Facebook today about Phil Collins being my least favorite drummer. So I feel bad you about it. You did. You did. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember reading that and going like, I don't like my number five. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. I like his, his Tarzan stuff. Even... Yeah. I almost even said like I feel like I just watched someone rip Phil Collins today. Yeah. <laughs> it was you. Yeah. Oh, that's yep. great. That's great. But but Phil Collins is kind of just a punching bag for a lot of musicians. Like because he, 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 he did all the easy adult contemporary stuff, but it was good for a reason, you know? Yeah. I mean he sold out for sure. Like you can't oh, yeah. argue with that, but yeah. Who cares? He's he's Doing what makes him happy, whatever. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's a great choice. Tarzan soundtrack for sure. I can't yeah. believe I didn't think of that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my number four is so random. I've got Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Oh, <laughs> yes. I love that movie, dude. Yeah. Shout out to the first Bill and Ted for being another honorable mention because that soundtrack is great too. But the second one is fire. Um, it's got like Megadeth, Faith No More, Steve Vai, Slaughter, Warrant. <laughs> it's like the Reaper rap. Oh, man. Oh, God, <laughs> oh, God yeah. Reaper rap yeah. is incredible. I. Oh, God, yeah. I'm glad you brought up Bill and Ted. Uh, King's X is another one of my favorite bands that never gets enough love in, especially in the America, but they're on that soundtrack too. And yeah, that soundtrack just slaps. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't sat down and just listened to the soundtrack, but like the music choices in that movie are incredible. Like I just, yeah, I love the Bill and Ted movies. Yeah. (laughs) It was that, that soundtrack was absolutely a product of its time, but they chose the really cool heavy metal bands to be on the soundtrack. So it was really cool. Every once in a while, you get like a soundtrack that actually does get the right artists to make something that's truly special. Yeah. 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 I love it. That's great. What's your uh, number four? Um, my number four is the indie rock soundtrack to Jennifer's Body. Oh, um, yeah. So this is right after Panic at the Disco's Pretty Odd. And then Ryan and John left the band to go do their like Beach Boys tribute thing because that's yeah, all that, that was. Sucked. Let's be honest, it was awful. And all your perspective was talk- is a jam. Yeah, and then like Spencer and 
Brendan go to go out and they do this song that's just incredible. And yeah. this this soundtrack's right up my alley because it's got fucking Haley Williams from Paramore, Florence and the Machine, All Time yeah. Low, Cobra Starship, like all these like all these bands that I've been listening to, cute is what we aim for. Granted, yeah. a lot of these bands have not aged particularly well. Um, yeah. But <laughs> we'll, we'll but get past that. It was still great. Yeah, it's just, it's a fun soundtrack. Yeah. And it, it goes with the, like, there's the original song for the movie, Through the Trees by, like, fictional band Low Shoulder. And I remember when this movie, like, was in development, Pete Wentz yeah. was originally going to be the Adam Brody role. Oh, wow. And then okay. he dropped out for some reason. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, then they replaced him with the OC guy. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I went and watched this movie. I'm like, no, that was great. I couldn't have seen Pete Wentz actually doing this. <laughs> yeah. Actually, so, uh, I've never seen Jennifer's Body. I've heard the soundtrack, but I've never seen the movie. Oh, God. I love it. It's It's very much like teen horror comedy um mileage may vary but it's right up my alley yeah. i love that I'll movie check it out. and the soundtrack yeah. is just it's incredible so yeah yeah i gotta i gotta check it out that's i gotta put that on my list it's fun for sure it's fun yeah and like i think Haley heli williams does her first solo track on that too mm -hmm. it's called yeah. teenagers it's like an acoustic yeah. punk track it's so good it's so yeah. good yeah, that's awesome. I like that a lot. I need to check that movie out. I, I've seen clips, like mainly the makeout scene. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, when I'm alone. Anyways, uh, number three. <laughs> uh, number three is one that uh, I got. It was brought up to me on Facebook uh, after the fact we had announced that we were doing soundtracks. I went mm -hmm. back and re-listened to it. I'm like, yep, this deserves to be top five. I've got singles. I don't know if I've heard of this. It's uh, Cam Cameron Crowe directed this film. Came out in 1992. It was about life in okay. Seattle, da dating life in Seattle. The film is okay, but the soundtrack is incredible. It's got Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, uh, Screaming Trees, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, Paul yeah. Westerberg yeah. from the from the Replacements. Okay. Um. It's uh, Mother Love Bone, the band that, that was before Pearl Jam. It was basically Pearl Jam with a different singer who died of heroin overdose in 1990. And they did this movie about life and dating life in Seattle. And uh, at the time, grunge was blowing up. And so okay. they decided to kind of capitalize on that. And uh, that's how that movie got so much exposure is because of having all those legendary bands at the time who were just regular bands trying to make it. And they just, the movie blew up because it's like, oh, shit, this whole album is awesome grunge bands that people love to death now. So it's like, That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, I love Cameron Crowe movies. I just have never, never gotten around to that one. So I will definitely check that out. That's cool, man. Yeah, that's a good one. That's uh, really underrated. Uh, it's The soundtrack is great, too. It's so varied and just full of, full of different uh vibes all the all throughout the whole thing it's great i really recommend it very nice awesome man god can i throw another honorable mention out because we brought oh, yeah. camera and crow i have to mention the almost famous soundtrack I'm yeah someone gonna... else mentioned that to me too yeah Fuck. i'm not gonna drop yeah. it off i'm not gonna drop anything off of my next three for it but i do love that soundtrack so i'm gonna Keep write it that down yeah, I want to write that down for later in case I do another video and I can add that to the list. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, my number three is uh, the newest one on my list. It's uh, I, I felt like the king of the modern soundtrack is James Gunn and my favorite soundtrack he's done so far is the one for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume oh, 2. Oh, I was going to put that on my soundtracks. But I totally yeah. spaced it because I was sitting and making my list. I'm like, what was the third or fourth one I was going to have? And I totally mm. spaced that was one of them. That was yep. that album. The, the two volumes made me love 70s soul pop more again. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And I think the second one, just like the way it's used in the movie mm -hmm. makes every song like when you're listening back to it. Like, I can't listen to half of those songs without tearing up because of certain moments and emotional beats in that movie. 
And yeah. I just think that's such a powerful thing, what what he did, because like, I mean, everybody's heard Surrender by Cheap Trick. Right. I can't listen to that song now without thinking about the end of Guardian of the Galaxy Volume 2. And sure. I, I just, I I don't know, that, that soundtrack from start to finish. Whoops. I'm out of battery <laughs> on my AirPods. Hold on just a oh, second. Good. <laughs> yeah, you're good. But no, I like that one a lot too. I uh, I really enjoyed Volume One. Volume One was really good too. Yeah, absolutely. Am I still good? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um. Yeah. I uh, Volume One is good, and I think Volume Two is somehow even better. And so, yeah, yeah I just I love what he did with both of those, and uh, his work on the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker is really incredible too. Well, uh, the way he incorporates soundtrack into it. Um, oh, yeah, he's always, he's, he's always great at it. Yeah. So that's yeah. Guardians volume two is, is the one that I thought I'd go with, but I couldn't make this list without putting a James Gunn soundtrack on here. So, Oh yeah, for sure. That's awesome. I like yeah. that. Um, my number two is Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Ah, oh, yeah. I fucking love that one. <laughs> All of the sex bomb tracks. Um, yep. Garbage uh, back- truck is my jam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just a lot of cool stuff on that soundtrack. Uh, Black Sheep by Metric. Mm-hmm. Um, all that stuff's just And so now cool. they release the actual Brie Larson version too, which is yeah. really good. I actually, I love Metric, but I like when Brie sings it better. Yeah, I do too, actually. she's got She's got a little more vibrato to it, and that's why I like it a little more. Yeah. I'm I'm a little upset. I didn't put this on my list because I forgot. I, there are so many soundtracks, man. It's so hard. Like I just yeah. thought of the ones that like most of these are ones that like impacted me in childhood. So right, yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, God, yeah, what a great pick. I love Scott Pilgrim. That oh, movie yeah, was a movie was like my Bible from 2010 to 2013. <laughs> it was like, yeah. yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that one too. My number two is one that surprised a lot of people in high school because I used to bump it all the time in my car, but it is the Footloose soundtrack from 1984. <laughs> um, I had a tape cassette player in my car because I was poor and had a hand-me-down car and it only had a cassette player and I only had a couple of cassettes and the Footloose soundtrack was one of them. So I'd pick up people in my 2000 Chevy Lumina bumping Footloose and they'd get in my car and they'd be like, what the fuck are we listening to? (laughs) And I'd be like, the greatest soundtrack ever. And I'd drive us wherever (laughs) we went and I'd be like, let's hear it for the boy. Like (laughs) that was, that was my high school, man. So yeah, the Footloose soundtrack is just seminal to me. (laughs) I never saw that one popping up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. I'm telling you, man, I have weird taste in movie soundtrack yeah. and, and movies in general. <laughs> let's be honest. Yep. Um, I can't say I'm a fan of the soundtrack. <laughs> it's it's cheesy '80s, but I yeah. dig it so much. <laughs> be funny if my my number one was like flash dance or some shit <laughs> it's not it's, the, it's not it's the dirty dancing soundtrack yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. let's be real yeah no excuse me it's the bodyguard all right <laughs> no it's not uh no that's it i i get it i get the footloose thing however i think the plot line to the film is the stupidest fucking plot line of all time it is but i love it <laughs> Plus dancing. Uh, John Lithgow clearly. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that movie just—I don't know. That movie, the movie speaks to me. I just the scene where he like goes off and he's like angrily dancing off all of his frustrations in the mill. I'm like, yeah. You know, I couldn't dance like that, but I used to do dumb shit like that. Yeah. So. <laughs> I can I can only picture Hot Rod when he goes to punch dances rage <laughs> <laughs> and falls. 
<laughs> okay, Hot Rod is such a good send up of that like cheesy eighties <laughs> of comedy. I just oh, love yeah. it. I love it so much. Oh yeah. Oh god. That's good. Um, <laughs> well, uh, my number one is another. It kind of falls into the themes of number two. I have Juno for my number one soundtrack. Juno was uh, Juno should have been in my honorable mentions, but I was trying to cut my honorable mentions down. Um, I, yeah, I love the Juno soundtrack. It's, it kind of like, it was my gateway into like that indie. Yeah. All pop type of thing, you know, like, cause I never listened to that until Juno. And then it was like, Oh, the soundtrack is like, really good and i yeah yeah, i started looking into the bands and stuff and all of a sudden i'm like wow so you mean like i can like music that's not just like four power chords and singing about masturbation like that's that doesn't make sense to me that's a thing (laughs) right yeah where's green day on this Exactly. Um, but yeah, that, that movie got me into a lot of indie folk and pop stuff too, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Same with, um, since this is movie soundtracks, I can't really mention it, but Scrubs got me into a lot of folk bands oh, too. Yes. Scrubs yeah. had great songs in it. Oh my God. Yeah. I still love their theme. I yeah. can't remember the yeah. band that does it, but I, I just, I love that song. I think it was uh, Laszlo Bain. That's right. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, Scrubs got me into a lot of bands that I never thought I'd listen to, like Modest Mouse, The Shins. Yep. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff like that. Built to Spill, pretty sure, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, Scrubs is such a great show. Yeah. They'd even play, put songs on from bands that usually would get a lot of shit, but somehow that song was just fantastic. Like, uh, mm-hmm. they, they put on deep cuts from Coldplay. I'm like, God, this song's great. Like, yeah. Yeah, well, and that's the thing, like, Coldplay didn't used to be Coldplay, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. they used to have something unique about them before Chris Martin decided he just wanted to sing in front of EDM, yeah. um, mm-hmm. you know? So, I yeah, I love that. I still think Clocks is, like, one of the best, like, if you want to make people sad in your movie or TV show, you just got to drop the piano riff from Clocks and it's just you're right. there. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those things like I watch a lot of ranked uh, worst to best albums and the ones that are the most depressing is Coldplay because it's just like every single one is what fucking happened to this band? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's, that's what it is. I can't even remember. There was like an issue of alternative press back when I was still like subscribing to them where they they had some jab at Coldplay mm-hmm. where they were like Coldplay released like this album. And then dropped off the face of the earth, never to be seen again, or something yeah. like that. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." Sometimes I wish I could tell myself that, you know. Right. Uh, I I think it would have been an epic career trajectory if they did Viva La Vida and then just broke up. Yes. Like, because Viva La Vida was the peak. Yeah, that was, was the last one. That was the yeah. last one where I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna listen to this all the way through." Yeah. yeah. After that, it's just all downhill. Yeah. But yeah, I remember they played Everything's Not Lost was on an episode of Scrubs, and that's such a good song. Yeah. Yep. God. Early cold yeah. play. And they played they had some Lifehouse songs on there. I'm like, oh fuck, this is a good song. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Stuff that wasn't just radio the radio singles from them. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I bet it was Zach Braff would actually go through and listen to these bands and like pick out songs for the episodes. Yeah, because he did really good. Uh, what was what was that first movie that he did? Garden State? Is that? Yeah. One? Yeah. Yeah. The soundtrack for that is really good, too. That's and another you... honorable mention. I should I'm going to write that down for later. Yeah. I keep forgetting. Like there's certain movies. I'm like, God, I forgot that one, too. The Garden oh. State soundtrack. <laughs> the American yeah. Pie soundtrack's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my number one is another 80s classic maybe one that won't surprise you quite as much. <laughs> um it's the lost boys oh there you go that's yeah. awesome yeah i i love this uh cry little sister is one of the greatest songs ever written and yeah. any cover of it has not even come close to what george mcmahon did and yeah i wish people would just stop covering it because it's just not good when you try um yeah. 
every song on this is so much fun. I still believe by Tim Caviallo, the aka sexy sax guy. Like I'm just yeah. like, yeah. yeah, man. Like this this soundtrack and this movie are just like they're so ingrained in my identity. Like I yeah. I can't even tell you how many times I've watched The Lost Boys and I bump the soundtrack on like almost a weekly basis. I love the songs on yeah. this. Um, yeah. Yeah. The Lost Boys is just, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's definitely one of my favorites. It's my favorite soundtrack. I love it. Yeah, so. it was, it was, it was on a list of like uh, movies that I was like, oh, I got to re, re listen to that. Um, mm-hmm. Cause I'm aware, I've like listened to the songs from it, but not all constantly all the time. Right. I've, I've always constantly just, whenever I've heard it, I have enjoyed the hell out of it. And so it's like, one yeah, it's like, yeah, that's an important one. And it's like usually synonymous with, great soundtracks that's like one movie you immediately think of every time oh absolutely because it's just ev- and every needle drop in the in the movie works i love the echo and the bunny men cover yeah. of people are strange i love how yeah. it plays out as they're like driving into this town where everybody's just kind of like not like they are from home i just love it yeah so it's to me it's like the lost boys is a perfect movie and it's got a perfect soundtrack to go with it so yeah. yeah, another uh, horror movie to that similar vein that I was going to consider was The Crow. Oh, God, that sound- yes. That was another one I was contemplating. A friend of mine mentioned this one to me um, where like the soundtrack was more remembered than the film was Queen of the Damned. Yes, Queen of the Damned had a very popular soundtrack. Yeah. I don't think and no one the remembers Damned the film. a very popular movie, though. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's uh, that's kind of the stuff that I was thinking of when I was asking other people other stuff. And like they had like Blade Runner. Yeah, uh, the Blade Runner one is good. Eight Mile, kind of uh, the Batman movies actually had great soundtracks from the yeah. 90s. The yeah. 89 one, especially with with yeah. Prince doing the soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, there's so many good soundtracks. And that's like, I mean, these are definitely like five soundtracks that I think have impacted me like over time. Right. There's so many other good ones that you could talk about. And yeah, right. I love it. For sure. Ugh. Yeah. But I think that's all the ones that I, I was wanted to at least get a word of mentioning of. Um, there's some where it's like some bands I like put out a single on an album, but no one remembers that song because it was on the soundtrack that no one fucking remembers anymore. Right. Like the 1998 Godzilla. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Who, there's some. Who, yeah. Uh, there's Foo Fighters Foo Fighters has A320 which was a really underrated song yeah, from that on that. That's right. That's right. Wallflowers has the their cover of Bowie on that Heroes. Yeah, I forgot that they did a cover for that one. Yeah. That's a good yeah, that's such a good cover and it's hard to yeah. cover Bowie because Bowie yeah. is Bowie. So. Yeah. Yeah, they modernized it so well. It's just like and Heroes is such a timeless song so it's just like Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, oh, I think yeah. uh, I think that's all I was going to mention. Do you have any movie other soundtracks that you wanted to, that came to mind? No, I'm sure I'll think of a bunch of them once we stop this video. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you absolutely. Know, that's how it goes, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Before we uh, before we wrap things up, Sam, what are some uh, shameless plugs that you wanna that you wanna mention? Oh, um, I mean, you can check me out on Backlot Six Hundred Five, where I'm talking movies every week. Uh, we're available wherever you get your podcasts, and uh, you can check out my cartooning work at the Ghoul Fields on social media. I do like daily comic strips revolving around a little spooky ghoul named Sally, who's essentially just me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's that's what I got going. Yeah, awesome. Then, yeah, well, thank. Yeah, I, I yeah, you guys have had me on your show before. I, I really appreciate. We talked about Kindergarten yeah. Cop. That was a lot of fun. And absolutely, yeah. we have to have you on again, man, because you you're such a fun guest. <laughs> absolutely, uh, yeah. I was talking to Casey. I can't remember what band he said he'd want to do at some point, but he mentioned one band. He's, I can't remember what it was. He's big into hair metal, so it wouldn't surprise me yeah. if it was something from that genre era type of I thing. Think I think it was probably Motley Crue or something like that. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I bet you. I bet you it's something like that. Motley Crue, Guns N' Roses. Something yeah, something. Like yeah, so I think it was probably. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've had offers to do so, or asked to do some bands. I'm like, ooh, I don't know if I want to do that. They're so. <laughs> if, if it's a band I don't care for and they have like 20 albums, I'm not sure I want to do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't want to have to do the homework to listen to all of it. No, I mean, yeah. I respect a lot of these artists, but some like I know they'd probably get good ratings, but do I want to put myself through that? Probably yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Like I, you know, when I, when I'm like, oh, do I want to watch this movie? At least it's a movie. It's two hours of my time. You know what I mean? Right. Like, but yeah, <laughs> exactly. I get that. So. Well, hell yeah. Well, that this was awesome, man. Thank you so much, Sam, for yeah. being on here. This was this was a great. This is like my first uh, themed video that wasn't like strictly just oh, rank a band's albums and songs. This was something completely different. So, yeah. Well, I had fun, man. I'm glad that I'm glad that we were able to do this. And thanks for having Absolutely. me on. I, I I appreciate it a lot. Absolutely, man. Thank you for doing this. Um, yeah. Uh, for as far as upcoming episodes for Dresh Code, we've got Queens of the Stone Age coming up. I'm very excited about that. Nice. Uh, with Xavier Pastrano, good friend of mine, and then we're going to be ranking the Killers albums. Ah. Uh, uh, because that one with my friend Macy Lupica, we couldn't decide uh just top ten songs. We were doing singles and underrated songs because it's just like right. you can't. Yeah, yeah. It's damn near impossible. Yeah, the Killers have so many good ones. It's yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let me know, Sam, what other artists you want to do, because uh, I think it would be awesome to figure out. Um, I, I like doing a lot of the oddball bands that no one thinks of or no one's done on YouTube yet. Hey, and, uh, if you ever need Cobra Starship or 303, expert yeah. right here. <laughs> yeah, side note, Gabe's Gabe's old band Midtown is reuniting for tour dates with My Chemical Romance. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's yeah. so cool. <laughs> Yeah, my chem is basically they're not having the same openers for every show on the tour. They're doing different openers for every show. Oh, okay. It's, so like some of the openers that they have right now are like uh water parks, um Thursday, turnstile, um homeless gospel choir. I've never heard of them. Okay, yeah, but never that heard sounds, of them either. That sounds interesting. Uh <laughs> Meg, Meg Myers. Bouncing Souls, that'll be cool. Ooh, yeah. Bad Flower, Lemon Twigs. Oh my God, I would kill to see Bad Flower open for Mike. Head. Yeah, yeah. That's. I think those dates they're only opening in like, uh, oh Massachusetts and New York. That's it. Mm -hmm. The one I'm going to, it's Thursday and the Homeless Gospel Choir. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome, man. So you'll yeah, that'll to, be good. You have to let me know because, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I, uh, you'll have to let me know how they are. I I don't think I'll make it to the Mike Chem show. Are you going to the one in Minneapolis? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got I got a floor ticket for that two and a half years ago, something like that. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, it was two hundred fifteen dollars for not even StubHub regular price. Jeez, so, that's crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, well, dude, enjoy that because Mike Chem is just. Yeah, I'm oh, excited. They're incredible. Oh yeah, it's gonna be good. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, all all that aside, uh, thank you, Sam, for being on the yeah. show. I really appreciate it. Thanks, and, for having uh, me, Zach. Absolutely. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Uh, let me know in the comments what some of your movies, your favorite soundtracks are, because I'm I'm sure there's millions that we didn't think of. Yeah. That uh, when we see the comments, like, damn, <laughs> how did I forget that one? Like, absolutely. Uh -oh. <laughs> Who would have thought that uh, Wedding Planner was a great soundtrack? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Wedding Singer. Oh, that one. Damn, that one's good. <laughs> that, that one is, is good. good. <laughs> wedding Planner one probably sucks. Let me see if that soundtrack's on here. Um, <laughs> uh, let me see. 2001 Phil. It probably has J-Lo on it, right? Yeah. Because it had J-Lo in it. Oh, I don't think they had a soundtrack. At least a sellable soundtrack. Oh. Like they, Yeah. But yeah. All right. <laughs> Probably for the better. Probably. Uh, <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah, man. anyways, for the 12th time, thank you, Sam, for being on the show. <laughs> and, uh, well, I'll, I'll see you all later on the dress code.